Hello, everybody, and happy Wednesday. Today, I hope you think it's a treat because I do. I'm coming live to you today with the second show this week on the art of inspired selling, where I bring on subject matter experts to deliver their value to you just in case you're stuck in a little place and you need a little bit of push so that they can help you thrive in the new normal. So today, my guest is a very, has a very similar background to me. She's been in corporate America. She's a LinkedIn profile optimization expert. She's been on LinkedIn for quite some time. I found her on LinkedIn um, and I'm gonna read as I always do her information because I don't like to chop anybody's information up. I hope your guys' this week is going fabulous, you guys. We're going into a holiday weekend. I hope you're pumped. I hope you're ready for some fun, you know, because we all need that downtime. We all need to refresh. I hope you're working on some self-care, all of that. So today on my show, we have Marilyn August, the profit attracting expert. She's going to be discussing all things money and changing your mindset by defeating roadblocks internally and externally in your life. She's been featured in the LA Times, the Orange County Register, newspapers, as well as the OC Metro Magazine. Now I'm fully jealous because I don't think I've been in any of those magazines or newspapers. So she's like a rock star here. Her professional background includes over 10 years in corporate as a corporate trainer for international companies such as America Haunt. American Honda Corporation and the AAA Chicago Motor Club. So are you guys ready to know how to close more deals and make more money? I sure hope so because our next guest is going to help us do that. So without further ado, I'd like to bring on the show, Marilyn August. Thank you so much. Welcome to the Art of Inspired Selling. How are you this happy Wednesday? I'm very excited to be here. You're just a delight. Thank you so much. I forgot just talking to you. <laughs> I have, so I think the whole audience knows, and it, this is not about me, you guys. I'm just going to give it a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> I have been going through this wonderful transformation, which includes hypnosis. And oh. I have had this amazing awakening that's been happening. And people in my life have noticed this energy, this radiating energy that's coming mm. from me. And it's because I'm healing from the inside out. We all have trauma. We, You know, the interesting thing about hypnosis is that you might think you had some issue in the past and you're going to go back to this really traumatic issue to heal. My brain's been taking me on some trips. Like you'd be thinking I'm smoking a bowl somewhere. It's taking us in some really crazy things. And anyway, it's just wonderful. I'm hoping Deanna Nunez, if you're watching this show, I'm hoping that I'm going to have you a guest because she's my she's my hypnotherapist and we've been having some wonderful breakthroughs. But anyway, Marilyn. Today is about you. Today is about how our audiences can gain valuable insight to the subject matter expertise that you have that you can deliver them on this show. So first, where are you coming live from today? Well, I'm actually at this moment sitting in Las Vegas, Nevada of all places. And I bet it's (laughs) ice cold there today. No, no. (laughs) uh, This is not a place you really want to be. It's a long story and it does have trauma to it. (laughs) Las Vegas, yes. It's a temporary, uh, it's a temporary holdup. Okay. Well, so, but Vegas opened, right? Is it pretty much Uh, open? Don't get me started on that subject. (laughs) Uh, Mandatory masks in public places but they did open the casinos and uh, we don't want to go there. Okay. So let's, <laughs> um, we have some a chat that says marketing. This person, this person's making it come. It says use words to attract business. I believe it's called yeah. marketing 101. So that's what I love about doing a live show because you just never know who's going to pop in and have some sort of comment. You got to be ready to roll with the punches. So Marilyn, the ticket to get on my show, is that you have to tell us what inspires you to do what you do every day. What is it that has that driving force? Maybe it's a book, maybe it's a quote, maybe it's a person, maybe it's an ancestor. What is it that drives you to wake up and do the best that you can do every day? Well, first of all, I believe that we're all born with purpose, that we all have a contribution to make. And my, my driving force is my personal story. 
Um, and we don't have enough time for my personal story. It's a whole chapter in my book. Uh, but I know firsthand what it's like to be scared and alone and not know where your next dollar is coming from. And to me, there is nothing more fulfilling and gratifying in my life than to see people go to the next level, mm -hmm. to have some sort of, and it's so interesting you're doing hypnotherapy because I do a lot of what's called emotional release tapping, EFT mm -hmm. for people that know of it. And I've been coached and therapist and all that, and it is healing from the inside out. What I, but money is such a basic in our lives. And it's definitely Maslow's hierarchy of needs, but it's my personal story. It's, it's walking out on a marriage with the clothes on the, my back and thinking that I was the problem. Uh, I read my first self-help book on an airplane from Chicago to take the job in California at American Honda and decided that I was going to fix me that something's dramatically the matter with me because I was always struggling with money. Interesting. Never enough money. So it drives me. I, I don't know where that's coming from. Oh, okay. are you getting feedback? So yeah. what drives me is my personal story because I believe that when good people have money, it's a good thing. Yes. I agree. You know, and not maybe not everybody loves Damon Johns as much as I do, but if you've ever read, read his book about the power of broke, you know, about when you don't have anything and you have to make it happen and yes. you create that drive from within, that that's something that nobody can take from you, right? So if you're handed a silver spoon or you're born with a silver spoon, that doesn't mean that you're any less deserving of your fortune and, and your fame or whatever you have. But when you build that from nothing or you've come from the the streets or whatever, there's there's a little bit of a little bit of different swagger you can have. <laughs> well, there, there's a difference of life experience. I happen to know it personally. The difference between you know the silver spoon and and not knowing where your next meal is coming from and taking and putting one step in front of the other so when my clients uh close the big deal do something they never thought they could do uh that is to me that that feeds my soul absolutely that feeds I totally my get soul. That. There, I, I got to play with my microphone peeps. Hey, is there any okay. technical people out there that can help us with the, why we have feedback? It's already I, better. I switched I'm, something. Okay, I'm not getting feedback on my side. Okay. I'm using the computer mic, okay. so I don't hear the feedback. It's I already fixed it. So what are we going to talk about today, Marilyn? Uh, on our slides, you guys, I get to play Vanna, Vanna Brown because I'm not Vanna White. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about the slides that we're going to share. The name of the topic that you're going to deliver to us today is Profit GPS Breakthrough Revenue Roblox. And you guys, when I first talked to Marilyn, because we do have some similarities and some, I, I just want to say, don't be afraid to engage with people that are in your same niche, in your same mm -hmm. space, because the power of putting two people together that already believe the same it can, it's just awesome. So don't be competitive. Women lift other women up. I don't know where I'm going with this today, but I'm just saying, reach out to other people in your network that are doing the same thing because you never know what kind of synergies you can create together. So we What's were going to, we were going to talk, right, about <laughs> people that were um, having needing to pivot right now out of, of their workplace and what they were going to do, I think. But now through some situations that happen, we're going to talk about big breakthrough revenue roadblocks. And before we get started, was there something you wanted to add? Well, I wanted to add to what you said about um, what you intuitively know. Uh, one of the most um, brilliant books on uh, breaking through revenue roadblocks is a book that was written in 1917. It's called The Science of Getting Rich. Mm -hmm. And it's not in publication. Is it Wallace Waddles? Who, yep. Who's the Wallace okay. Waddles. You know it. Yes. So yeah. it's available on net on, on the internet. Um, I happen to have one of the original copies. Unfortunately, I loaned one of the original copies, never get it back. 
but he says there is no such thing as competition. It's one of the things he says, because everybody brings their own life experience, their own purpose, their own passion. So I'm delighted that we connected. Yes. I, even though we do some of the same things, we have very, very different uh, ways of doing things. And uh, who knows what might happen? Exactly. Yeah. You know, you we may grow, we may work together. Yeah. We are going to grow. Knows? We, we are, are going to grow together. So um, I'm going to share the slides that we have now okay. so that um, everybody can start to learn about um, some money breakthroughs. Here we go. So you just tell me, let me take off my little heart. Everybody knows I love hearts, but we don't need to see that on the slides. Okay. Let, let's get started. What what kind of wonderful information are you going to deliver? First, let's learn a little bit more about you. Where well, did you yeah. start? Well, I didn't know you were going to read my intro. So there's just people <laughs> seem to want to know. I think it's important, um, besides my personal history, to know that I had quite a jaded corporate history. Um, even though I work for some very fancy companies, I was a corporate trainer in the days when they had training departments. Mm -hmm. um, those were my Honda days. And just for a, a little background, I was the highest ranking woman in my division. I worked for corporate. Um, I was not a manager. And I experienced firsthand, firsthand with very naively uh, a bias against being a woman and a different culture. So we had both the Japanese, the auto industry and the women, but that's another whole topic that we could talk about. But the point is, I never fit in. I never lasted at jobs. I uh, I was one of these people who always wanted to fix things, wanted to make it better. So um, this was a 10-year career. Um, I got fired from my last job, and I think the next slide will be where I went then. Oops. Yeah, I think if you bet, I, I thought, went, yes. So, I have a tasty mouse here. Yeah, my uh, my business has been an evolution rather than a revolution. So as I said, I warn people about reading self-help books because they might become a self-help person themselves. And I developed um, a six-week program, which I'm going to relaunch um, on this, on what would now be called the psychology of money. On the we're going to talk about inner healings. Money's a huge topic for inner healing. And what happened is people that were doing my six-week program were having breakthroughs. And they only business owners and salespeople. Mm -hmm. And they then said, I, they said, what's next? And I said, oh, let's do another training program. I'm a trainer. And no, 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 I want you. So that's how I became what is now called a coach. I didn't plan on becoming a coach. I didn't market myself as a coach. I used to call myself a business advisor because I used to tell people what to do. I didn't stand on the sidelines. And what was happening is that uh, people weren't able to execute on what I was teaching them. And so that's how Profit GPS came about. And that's how LinkedIn marketing came about because they couldn't get appointments. They couldn't get appointments uh, to, to sell. They couldn't get in the door. Mm -hmm. And LinkedIn became my answer to the, no more cold calls, no more voicemail. And so it's kind of been evolutionary. And I'm going to be bringing back um, my six-week program as a sales training because salespeople were taking it because they were they're in control of their own destiny. So I wanted to give you just a little bit of background that I didn't sure. suddenly one day drop off and decide this is what I'm going to do. It's kind of life moves you along. It does. And it does. All, man, this, this, I don't know what's wrong with my microphone. But um, when, when I talk to some clients as well um, that are not market driven, so they, they build what they think it is they're going to sell, and then they start delivering it without really understanding their target market and what pain it is that they're truly solving, they don't grow as fast as they should. Right. So you were listening to your market. You were delivering this information. And and it, as soon as you left the, the the seminar or as soon as they left, the information didn't go anywhere. It sounds like you, you looked for a solution to, to fix that. So let's talk about the three pillars of profits. And then before we end this, we're going to talk about 
those people on LinkedIn who just think that they can build a big connection and sales are going to happen or, or they're paying $2,000 a month. I've had clients that have paid me, you know, and the, and the, our, the, our system isn't broken. We'll, we'll generate leads for you. But if your sales system isn't in place and your discovery system isn't in place and the message market match for what you're selling isn't in place and your closing isn't in place, then the deals aren't going to happen no matter how many leads that you have or connections that you have. So, Let's talk about the three pillars of profits and being richly fulfilled. Okay. So what you just said, Catherine, fits right in with what I'm about to say. Then it's uh, so relevant to the world. It's so right relevant right now. And you said it so well. And I can't tell you, uh, we do have to talk about that. I don't know how long we have, but we do have to talk about that because um, I've heard this doesn't work too many times. So uh, when I started doing my work with um, Wealth and Wisdom Seminars, I had two audiences. One were people that were deeply in debt and one were entrepreneurs and salespeople. And when I started my business, I didn't know anything about sales. I'm like you. I didn't know anything about sales. And I like to say in my speeches that I, I built the field and they did not come. And so I had to learn about sales. And from that day forward, I've become both a student and a, and a teacher of sales. And I had to make the distinction, mm -hmm. needed to make the distinction for myself and others between greed and obnoxiousness and all the stuff we see in the news about abuse of people with using their money in, I'd say, negative ways. And the difference between people who have their money be a uh, part of their vision, a part of doing good in their life. And I have found with working with very, very wealthy people that the amount of money made no difference, that it was impossible to fill up the hole in the soul. There wasn't enough money in the world to fill up the hole in the soul. Crystal, that is our quote for repurposing this show. There is not enough no. soul in the hole. No, there's well, not enough money in the world to oh, fill the hole in the cell. That's, like part that. of, that's part of my sound bites. I have 50 of those if you okay. like. Yes, um, I like that one a lot. Someone, I have an ebook if people want it. It's called uh, Business Bites. Okay. Uh, somebody came up to me after a seminar and told me I was one of the most quotable people they knew. I didn't know I was one of the most quotable people until she handed me a list. <laughs> but that's how Richly Fulfilled became, a, came about. Because okay. it does take money to be fulfilled. If you're hungry, you're not going to be fulfilled. Okay, so let's jump back. Okay, let's go to mindset. Okay, well, uh, you want first, me to jump back? No. Okay. First pillars of success is your mindset. And you just talked about your energy being released and doing hypnotherapy. I'm going to tell you, and you know this, Catherine, and in the world of fast food fixes, this is a journey that isn't isn't a fast food fix. This takes work. You can affirm all day long, but if your subconscious mind is telling you that you're a loser, you're not. It's not going to make any difference. This, mm -hmm. this is a journey that is sometimes painful, but since we're talking in a in a in the context of sales, um, we all have beliefs about work. Some of them are unconscious, some of them are not conscious, and believe it or not, some of them are cultural. They're not ours. We don't own them. Let me just give you one example about work. Uh, and I have hundreds of them, but we won't go there. Um, one of the most common beliefs that is cultural is that time is money. You're gonna hear this all over the place. Time and I can is money. That. I do. You that. say that. So it helps me understand why I might want not to want to change it. Yes. Okay. Let's let's go back to Wallace Waddles. Mm -hmm. Trace the history of time as money. It's an industrial revolution that Henry Ford brought about. Before that, farmers worked seasonally. When you are doing a 
repetitive task. Yes. yes. And you're trading your time for money. Then time is money. But when you've spent years becoming an expert, when you've become, you, you've invested heavily in yourself and in your business, what you are um, flat rating with is that you're selling your passion, your expertise, your, now they have the word thought leadership, but this time is money is so deeply ingrained that some consultants bill by the hour. They have, you know, master's degree and beyond, and they still are stuck in time as money. So that's just a, that's just one to look at. I'm going to get a lot of pushback on that because people don't like it when you mess with their beliefs. <laughs> so, and then we have all these beliefs about money. And I didn't even start talking about the ones that we don't know we have. Mm -hmm. The ones that we don't know we have are the most dangerous. That's what your hypnotherapist is doing with you, Sean, covering those. That's and, what what, and would we call those like unconscious bias beliefs or unconscious beliefs or something? What would, would you label those or I, tag them as something? I call them hidden because unconscious offended people. I had to find a language to use to make this palatable to people when I first started. So they're hidden. They're hidden under the surface of our mind. Okay. There's something we live when you see patterns in your life and the way I see this in sales is the big one just slips away. You know, you you have it happen once, twice, three times, four times. And if you start, if you can work with somebody like a coach who can help you see the patterns in your life, you can figure out what the unconscious belief is. Okay. I, I can give you an example of that, but a lot of them are really not even your own personal ones. Like the idea that you should have a job uh, for the, one job for your entire career. My brother had one job for his entire career. And then you retire and he got the golden parachute. And that's not true anymore, but people still operate on that belief. Money, we have everything from money is the root of all evil. By the way, that's not an accurate quote. Um, but that is the way that money is uh, portrayed. For a lot of people, um, I can go on and on about the money ones that are in our culture, about what you should do with it, what you shouldn't do with it, how you should spend it, how you shouldn't spend it, you know, and then we get into relationships and we, you know, do you know that money is, at least when I was studying this, money was the one of the top three causes of divorce. Interesting. You know, um, and then what's my last one down there? Oh, beliefs, beliefs about, about sales. sales. Okay, now those are easy because they're in our culture. Most companies don't even use the word sales. They have business to. development. Uh, Keep what, going. There's some other. Gosh, I don't Keep know. Keep going. Let's see. Well, those have been my titles, right? Uh, account executive. Account executive. Yes, yes, yes. Right. And, and there are people, even the CEO that I reported to, you know, would say, mm -hmm. I don't want some sleazy sales person right. or some <laughs> car sales person in here. And, you know, and then I get a sales person in there for an interview and I get them up to the top and they go, I eat what I kill. I'm like, oh, dude, that's like not the language that you want to use with people <laughs> that already think you're a sleazy car sales person. So, yeah. So, but let's say you are, um, a solopreneur, mm -hmm. which which the majority of my audience is. Yes. Right? And mine, too. And or a consultant uh -huh. or a e work with creator. Yeah. Uh, yes. A speaker. Mm -hmm. And if you tell people that if you're in business for yourself, you're in sales, they cringe. They cringe that I'm not selling. I, I don't sell. Yes. Selling is a very... And see, what we do, the way we blow, blow some of these away is we look at the facts. We look at the facts over fiction. Sales is the most noble profession. And the entire world revolves around sales. Somebody doesn't sell something, nothing happens. Right. So we surround fear with facts and we surround some of these cultural beliefs with the facts and look at the world differently than the average person. And down in that little oval, 
and excuse me, down that oval there, I offer you a self evaluation, a confidential. Okay. You know, I have like lists and lists and you just rate your thoughts on it. Part of it, and this is what you're doing, Catherine, is part of this is to bring it to the surface. Like my belief that I was wrong, that I was the bad person, that there was something wrong with me because I was getting divorced. Okay. So I blamed myself. So mindset, changing your mindset. And I want to go back to what you said about LinkedIn, because this fits. If you're selling like it's 1999 and you're pitching and you're doing features and benefits selling, it's not going to work in 2020. And so uh, do we have things here? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, thank you for posting that. Yes. So, but so work, I believe that uh, mindset shift is constant, continual. The COVID, uh, having to compartmentalize COVID, changing the way we work. I mean, you can't go meet somebody at their office. No. Everything has to be virtual. In fact, I had a, cl I had a client, and notice the past tense, who simply could not convert from his networking. He's an avid networker. He liked to go. He went to two, three meetings a week. He's an in-person guy. And now he was stuck in his office and he really went through some withdrawal and some difficult times and just could not make the adjustment to marketing virtually. Yes. No and one has no clue. I am so sad about my uh, feedback, but you know, um, my background, I think you might know is in the healthcare industry and typically pharmaceutical sales reps, healthcare sales reps, oh, yes. laboratory sales reps, all we did was slept breakfast and lunch and snack and get in front of people all the time, right? That's how we lived, detailing, dinners, whatever you want to say. Now that those sales representatives, and I, I, the, the numbers escape me right now for how many there are in this United States and world, they're grounded. And it's only those representatives that are becoming the modern day salesperson that are incorporating video, incorporating social selling, incorporating messaging that is creating value and not spamming. Those are the people that are going to win. The people yeah. that are totally paralyzed at home and they don't know what to do and they're missing their airplanes and their great steak dinners and their hotels and whatever. But those people are having a hard time today. Yes. They really are hard, having a hard time. So we're here to solve that problem for you guys to talk about <laughs> some mindset shifts and what we're primarily around um, money and sales. So these are the behaviors that you're talking about. So self-management. So yeah, you can you can be you can be, you know, the most positive, uh, affirming, wonderful person in the entire world. Have have done a lot of therapy, done a lot of work on yourself, and none of it's any good. This is the third second pillar to break through is your behavior. Uh, it doesn't do any good. You have to cooperate and and not make things happen, but allow things to happen. So it's very difficult, or I don't want to say difficult, different to self-manage, to plan your day. When I left corporate America, I didn't know grocery stores were open during the day. <laughs> you know, So one of the things that might help, particularly if you're new, is to treat your business, your solopreneur, as a job to set a schedule. I know it sounds crazy, but you will develop a work style. And I know this isn't glamorous, but by golly, having a routine really helps. Yes. And one of the things I noticed for myself and all, this is a personal confession, is I tend to get on overwhelm. There's so much to do. I'm in overwhelm right now. <laughs> My stomach hurts really bad. <laughs> yes. And there's um, always a proposal. There's always a tweak. There's always an email sequence. There's always a comment. There's always a social media post. There's always something. There's always a kid thing. There's always a dog thing. It's just like that in life, right? And that's what I think you have to come to the conclusion is it's always like that yep. in life. Okay. Now I don't know where on the slide it says there, because I'm 
I'm leaning in to read my own slides. <laughs> it says behavior, uh, self-management. Uh, okay. So one of the things, no yeah. All right. So let me go to the next one. So we kind of okay. keep on track there. One of the things that uh, we all have to learn, and it was very, very beneficial to me to learn this in my sales training, is we have pay time and no pay time. Mm -hmm. And to divide your day into pay time and no pay time. So the proposals are no pay time. Working with clients is pay time. Yes. This is no pay time. <laughs> so looking at your day and actually looking at your day in percentages. What percentage of what would be awesome? You know, we often talk about how much money you would like to learn, but how much of your uh, average day would you like booked with pay time? And if you say 100%, it's not possible. No. And, and that's a theme that we've been talking about with one of my other guests that I had on here, Nikki. We talked about um, you, where you are today is a result of what you were doing 90 days ago. So if, if you were selling like crazy, you're going to have new business, right? If As long as you're a good salesperson. If you were selling today uh, or if you were selling 90 days ago, you have business today. Um, but your business, your books might be a mess. Your some of your marketing might be a mess, and then you're like, "Oh my gosh, I'm not nurturing my audience." Okay, now I'm going to write this nurturing sequence, and then you spent 90 days making sure that was good. And then guess what? Now you have no money because you weren't selling in those 90 days. And now, oh my gosh, my website needs to be done, but I can't do my website because now I have to sell. Um, it's this yo-yo effect, right? That people have that's going back and forth and back and forth instead of time blocking, treating money. I, I like to treat money as if, if it's dollars. And I I actually spreadsheet my time. I'm a, I'm a goofball like that because I really am analytical and I look at my my hours in a day and I did that as a sales rep. You know, there, every sales rep has 24 hours in a day and it's how you spend them that actually makes the difference. So what, what, what take home message are you gonna talk about for uh, addressing the pay time, no pay time? Well, it's interesting you would say that because it's very similar to what you say. Um, profit GPS, the GPS, the G stands for goals, the P stands for plan. Okay. And blocking your time, uh, putting project priority, and consistency. Yes. So that's where routine comes in. But I don't know where it, it's it's consistency. So and so it's GPS plan strategy. Okay. So there are things that don't generate um, pay time. So if you find that you're you're doing 16 tweets a day and nothing happens, and as I like to say, likes never go to the bank. <laughs> So where is your time best spent? As a CEO of your company, in front of clients to generate revenue, especially right. if that is zone of genius. But if you're a bad salesperson and every time you get in front of somebody, you open your mouth and nothing good comes out, then that's when you need to recognize that you might need to hire a salesperson. Or you don't have a sales process. Yes. I think you're talking about a sales process. You can have the best marketing in the world, uh, but if you don't have a process, you don't know what step one, step two, step three on the buyer's journey is. You're not, it doesn't matter how good your marketing is. So this is all wrapped together, even though I call it the three pillars of success. Your mindset is, um, and I have a client right now who's, and I've had several whose mindset is, um, they're going to buy my experience. I've been in business for a long time. Uh, I'll, I'll wazzle dazzle them with my features and benefits. And all the awards I've been winning. Is that same person have about 250 testimonials on their page? Because it's all it's also all about them. <laughs> but they, we can't say they aren't gonna be done, they aren't gonna have that on their page when I'm done with them. That Good. is on their website. I'm laughing because you know me well. <laughs> I'm laughing because you know me well. I want to make sure I get this. The um, next one we have uh, there was time management hacks and then oh, that's the next one I wanted to talk yeah. about. Good. And I think this was kind of like your spreadsheet. One of the things I've done, and this is so simple and yet so powerful, is use your phone timer to figure out how long things take. 
because you can estimate something that's going to take an hour and it really takes two hours. So one of the things I've done is set timers and say, okay, this, this, I estimate this is going to be a two hour project and the timer goes off and I'm halfway through. So one of the reasons people, I don't like the words time management, but managing yourself in relationship to time, you have to know how long things are going to take. Yes, and time expands sometimes into the time that you have allowed for it, right? That's right. We, so I use a tool called Toggle. I don't know if you've heard of that. So I set no. timers. I set It's an online program. I set timers for what I'm doing. I categorize it. It gets coded, blah, blah, blah. But um, I always like to say um, the day before vacation, the day before vacation, the house gets clean, the kid gets packed, the... <laughs> The garage, whatever the house, the car is cleaned. If you're taking the car, the the refrigerator gets the stuff gets thrown out. All your work gets done. You might be hyperventilating, yeah. but you you just like honed in and focused, and you got everything done, right? Right. And and if we allow for something, if we allow two or three hours for something that really could have been done in 15 minutes, we weren't being efficient in and with our with our time and our skills and our tasks and that kind of that 80 20 rule as well so whether you're using toggle which i think is a great idea we have to know how long things are going to take because you are right you will expand to use up that time yes. and so uh it's a good thing but most people don't do that most people don't know and so that's where the overwhelm comes from there i i, I can't get this website redone because it's going to take me Forever. And oh, by the way, I've got to make write a, write a post. One of my favorite things about posting is to say, when you have nothing to say, say nothing. <laughs> you know? So it isn't. A, I, have I love that. your saying that's here next. <laughs> I'm, going to send, I'm going to have to send you my business advice book. I'm yes, because <laughs> I don't know if you've seen now. Now you're a subscriber of my email marketing, which I tend to throw my own personal humor in that if you guys haven't noticed. You spaghetti throwers like I don't I, I and I, I've been 100 percent this person because I'm, I'm a subscriber to the thought process of ready, fire, aim. If, if you if you get into the habit of doing something first, don't worry about it being perfect. Don't worry about the strategy, whatever. Maybe maybe adapt to the habit first and then go back and create your strategy because now the habits there. Now you can put the strategy in place, but not, it doesn't have to be perfect. To, to do it, but spaghetti marketing is, is pretty funny. You like spaghetti marketing? I do. I do. Well, can, you will probably already know what it is. Yeah. You throw enough shit against the wall and hope something sticks. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I call it. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was spaghetti. That is exactly, <laughs> that is exactly what I tell people not to do. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the, and the, and here I think you're the perfect person to talk to this about. I I find and the, and this is something for us to talk about. It's a good thing you have an audience here, but this is really a, a philosophical statement. I've had so many clients buy stuff, so they'll buy SEO, but their website's lousy, or they'll, or they'll buy uh, somebody to do their. Oh, I had this the other day. So I have somebody that's paying someone to do their posting and the posts are awful. Um, but they were told they should post. So they pay somebody to do their posting or they're sending out emails that are worthless. Um, so by there's so much to choose from mm -hmm. or they have a B2B business and they're on Instagram and they may not need to be on Instagram or they don't understand the difference between Facebook and LinkedIn. So to me, if you don't have a strategy, and this is the part, third part of GPS, for your marketing, then you are wasting time and you can, have, you can be busy day and night, night and day, and nothing's gonna be a result because like you said, you're, you don't know who your target is. You don't know what your message is. You don't have a sales process. And heaven forbid somebody should bite because yes. you're not going to know what to do with them anyhow. And you have 1,400 followers on or 14,000 followers on Facebook. And I say, so what? 
So what? If you're not adding value and you don't have a sales process or you don't know how to talk to people on the telephone or because that's what you're going to do, you're eventually going to get them on the phone unless you're selling a commodity. And we're not selling a commodity. So that's what I mean by spaghetti marketing. I don't mean throwing a phrase out there, but I do mean being strategic about what platforms you use. And that's why you need, this is a commercial for you, Catherine. <laughs> this is why you need Catherine. Because as I, I've seen, I've seen it with so many of my LinkedIn clients, they buy anything and everything and somebody sells them a piece of this and somebody sells them a piece of that and it has no strategy behind it. If you don't have a strategist working with you, you're wasting your money and you're wasting your time. And that's a commercial for you. And, and it takes time. You know, yeah. my my footprint that I that I've developed, my following that I developed, my brand, my my SEO, if you will, it it's t it's taken time you know i exited from corporate america i landed some clients you know you can you can have revenue you can build people but to build that brand and to build your subject matter expertise it doesn't happen overnight people and you have to be consistent because today you can't talk about sleep apnea and tomorrow you can't talk about dieting because it didn't happen overnight and then oh my gosh there's a new squirrel that ran across my desk now i'm going to do some sort of mlm marketing like you got to stay with it you have to stay with it and i mean some people you know I, I i'm not a baseball fan or statistics but i know that there's some statistics you can use for how many times at bat somebody has hit and then they yes. hit their home run or, you know, people who have been grinding at something for years and years and years and years. And finally somebody found them and now they have a cooking show. Or how about the actor that started acting as a child right. and went through all of these things and all of these things and they finally got their break. But all people see is the break. They didn't That's see, right. you know how they have that, that uh, symbolic iceberg. They didn't see what was happening underneath and all the time and energy they were working to protect, to um, perfect, perfect their craft. It takes time. Well, that's so, you know, when I used, to, when we were speaking, when we were in person live speaking, one of the reasons I'm here in Vegas uh, for the conference and convention business is you know, people would come up to me after I was speaking or after I did a presentation and they said, oh, I just love this. I just want, I want to do this. I want to be you. I want to get up on stage. I have so much to share. And I'd say to them in the 10 years that it took me to get here. <laughs> so they see the 20 minutes on stage, just exactly what you said. They don't see the 10 years it took to get here and all the no's that I heard before someone hired me. So yes. they, they see the glamour, but I, I also wanted to really go and hone in on what you said about it takes time. I have um, the first chapter in my book, which is out of print, but it will be back, um, says this is not a fast food fix. Yeah, and you have that here as well. Yes, I do. Yes. <laughs> um, I wanted to speak to that because I've attracted, um, for some reason, uh, and that's why we were going to talk about from corporate to consultant. I've attracted a number of people who are in their, shall we say, um, midlife. Uh, not, I call them, too old to get another job and too young to retire. <laughs> Maybe people, that's me. <laughs> you know, too, uh, well, if you're 20 hey, I'm old years enough old. to retire. I'm just let's yeah. put that out there right now. I'm good. I'm down with it. If I could retire today, I would. I got lots to do. Well, let's just say that there's a lot of us who can't retire. And that retires another one of those beliefs. And you'd probably be bored to death. But other than that, um, what they what they wanted, what they'd hire me for is for 90 days to, as a startup consultant. And they wanted to learn everything there was to know about being a consultant in 90 days. Mm -hmm. So they wanted 20 years of expertise in 90 days. And it's not possible. It's just not possible. So I really appreciate you saying that. Uh, startup, any brick and mortar startup wouldn't expect it to have a profit for a year. So um, I love what you said about it takes time. It takes time and you got to be patient. And, yeah. and, you know, we are in a society, if you will, where um, immediate gratification yes. is, is the thing. 
you know, with the kid, with our kids. And um, I, we, we have an intern on our staff right now, and we're going to be start doing some fun things with her about interviewing young influencers and how those young influencers hit it. You know, they had one viral video that did millions and millions of, of views. And so every kid thinks they're going to be that influencer. That's right. Every kid thinks they're going to be that uh, gamer that's going to get sponsored. So they, you know, it's that immediate gratification thing that they think it's going to be that one hit wonder or they're not going to be the one hit wonder. So we're going to try to deconstruct some of those things of the of the successful influencers that have actually built a business around it instead of just having a couple million views. So well, we're, we're sidetracked again. We'll stay. That's why I have people no, make slides, people, because I am the one that gets sidetracked. It's not my guest. It's me. No, it's All really right. it's really right on track because um, it's the same thing as a startup consultant who thinks that they're going to close a deal with having no sales skills, just like I was. So you, you it's very apropos because actually... I have an example of that with dog videos, a woman who has worked very hard, who's got sponsorships now, uh, and everybody and their brother's trying to copy her. They just don't have her personality. Yes. yes. So I think we've about killed the uh, the uh, behavior part. Yep, we went from behaviors to now we're at skills. Okay, and that's where that's where that's the third pillar. And that's where you pointed to sales skills. Um, I learned my marketing skills through trial and error, of course, but also because I was a business consultant for the Small Business Development Center. I like to say the government hired me because I knew nothing about business. <laughs> but sales is a lifelong journey. And, as, and without that sales skill set, you're not, you're not going to close a deal. You're not, you cannot sell today the way you sold years ago. And if you think that you can go into a client and just show them how great you are or take one of those fancy brochures, first of all, you're not going into a client. You know, you're not, you have to have a skill set. And for that, that takes training. Yes, um, I, I know you told me that you're going to have Michael Gerber as a guest. Well, we're hoping. I have this part we're hoping. Of I have his partner well, coming on. And so we're hoping for, Michael, if you're watching this, we're hoping for you to also sign up to be a guest on the show. Yes. Well, he's one of the most, he's one of the most famous authors of a book called The E-Myth. And I will just summarize in a very, very, very. Uh, it's on my shelf. I'm <laughs> sure it is. It's on my shelf too. It should be on your shelf if you don't have it. Well, I do have the E-Myth. Revisited, yes, I yeah. do. I just think it might be uh, downstairs or in my bedroom. I've got well, my I didn't there. mean you, Catherine. You the get you the audience. Yes, <laughs> the audience. Um, but basically, he says, and I'm just going to summarize it in a sentence or two. That all businesses are started by technical experts. Yes, you are a technical expert in your business. I'm a technical expert in my business. I didn't even know I was speaking jargon until I realized I was a jargon junkie and had to rethink how I speak to people. Here's my, here's my book. Okay. It's so that's a nice plug for Michael. <laughs> <laughs> but basically he says, and quote, tell, correct me if I'm wrong, Catherine, that you have to pick up a skill set. You have to pick up two sets of skills. And of course he's talking about different kinds of businesses than just solopreneurs. But one of the skill sets you have to pick up is sales. And if you have beliefs about sales, you see how this all wraps together. If you have beliefs about sales are that there is used car salesmen and, and sales are pushy and I don't want to be associated with sales, then why, why would you go take sales training and why would you become skilled at sales? And you also need a sales process. So there are skill sets that you're going to have to pick up. And frankly, if you try to do it all yourself or just read a book, as you said, uh, I've got lots. I've got a bookshelf full of books. That not the books are bad. I wrote one myself, but it's not all that's going to do it. You have to uh, have to. That's a parent statement. I shouldn't say it like that. But you I should. Read, I should. You should. It's the parent in me. My initials are M A, and they used to call me Ma when I was a coach. Um, it's. I recommend you definitely. Spend some time and energy and money 
on picking up your sales skills and your sales process. Um, yeah. And, you know, as you get advanced into sales, there's strategic prospecting, there's pre-sales, right. there's uh, what's, yeah, proposal stages, there's post-sales, there's follow-up, there's nurturing, there's up-sales, there's down-sales, there's side-sales. Like, it's such a complex process. Don't get overwhelmed. Just do it. Just learn it. Just find out where you're falling flat. Analyze you. Where did you fail? Why did you fail? What can I do to get better next time? If you can't do it, find a book. If you can't find a book, find a coach. There's not an excuse, right? Yeah. There isn't an excuse, but just to know that it's a noble profession. The highest paid people in the world are salespeople. Whether you're uh, Bill Gates, who sold Microsoft, but at one time you went from door to door convincing people on this weird PC. Um, it does, ever, not everybody is a used car salesman. Sales is a very, very sophisticated profession. It's, it's, and you'll use a lot of the skills in your personal life as well. I find myself asking more questions in my personal life. Yes, my and children are salespeople now. Your children. <laughs> They've learned the art of inspired selling. selling. From mom. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. I think it's, it starts to be natural too. Like yes, it does. It's, people are like, "Why aren't you going to answer?" And I'm like, "I'm still asking questions. Like I'm yeah. still like getting around to what like." And, and just have, what do you want the outcome to be? Hmm, what are you thinking? Yeah, interesting. Yeah, it's the Socratic, Socratic method. Um, yes. And I wanted to point out, I think there's a couple more bullets there. Mm -hmm. Forgive me for, I don't have my uh, PowerPoint up and I only use PowerPoint to keep me on track because I think we'd be here all afternoon. Yes, sorry um, people. <laughs> so selling expertise versus selling product. Yes. Making it intangible, tangible. Okay, so those are the two most important things. When I first started this, one of my coaches said that selling yourself is the most difficult thing in the world to sell. And I didn't know what they were talking about because I never sold anything else except myself. It's very personal. It's very emotional. And it takes, a, I think, Catherine, a whole different skill set to not take it personally. Yes. Your background in sales, you sold something that while you were emotionally connected to it, it wasn't you. So I think somewhere, I don't want to write another book, but somewhere, someplace, there's a place for, um, I don't know, maybe this is what we'll do. Um, the difference in selling yourself and how your beliefs and your self-worth and you're able to compartmentalize uh, your job from your personal life. And that person who walked in said, I eat what I kill. What do you do when you need the sale? Did you ever notice that when you need the sale, it never happens? It never, happens. It never happens. And, you know, part of my backstory and part of the reason that I really am, well, I'm an entrepreneur, but I tied my success to that of my company. I tied my personal success, my emotion, my self-worth to my sales, to where I was in the rankings, to how well the company was doing, to how well I was, um, my sales reps were doing. And then at the end of the day, when there's an acquisition and they just let you go. Oh, dear. Your self-worth is deflated, right? So you, when you tie your self-worth and your ability to eat what you kill there's probably a lot of depressed salespeople out there right now. Well, you know, again, <laughs> another whole new topic is I used to say I've been both fired and laid off. And I used to say uh, being fired is like being declared dead without a jury. And being laid off is at least you've got friends who have been laid off too. And you can go <laughs> commiserate and have a day. Exactly. You just, yeah, you can... <laughs> You can complain together. So the challenge here in selling yourself is to make an intangible tangible. And that's what the marketing's about. That's what LinkedIn's about. It's making an intangible because you're selling intellectual property IP. Notice I said intellectual property instead of just saying IP. Because I've often said one of the first things to learn about sales 
is that people won't buy from you if they think they're stupid. So using acronyms is something to avoid, even if you know the acronym very well. So it's just one of the little tips for sales today is, um, is to watch your acronyms. Yes, and speak your sign language. Yes, keep your sign. So I'm going to move this around because we're going to wrap up in about four minutes. So marketing okay. and expertise, social media versus social selling. Oh, she's going to speak my language right now. Let's see. Let's see what you're... Okay. Because I am not a social media marketing person. No, you I'm aren't. Not, and that, am, yeah. It's one of the things that attracted to me is to you is that you use the word social selling. Yes. So the most important thing to know, and let's segue into LinkedIn for the few minutes that we have left, um, <clears throat> is that LinkedIn is not social media. And you don't treat it like social media. It's a professional networking platform. You treat it as such and you will be treated as such, even though we know that a lot of people think it's Facebook um, and they're treating it like social media. So it's very important to make the distinction because all the platforms are different and to treat them different. So if, again, that's a skill set, just knowing that distinction. Um, one of my coaches always said to me that personal growth and professional growth is all about making distinctions. And this is a very, very important distinction to make that social selling is what Catherine and I are talking about. We are not talking about social media where you just post and pray. So that was what the distinction I want to make. And I did that really fast so that we could wrap up and leave some time to talk about whatever you want to talk about. No, the, this has, you know, been about you as, as uh, you know, your expertise bringing you on. That's the whole point of my show, right, is to highlight mm -hmm. the people in my network and to get your subject matter expertise. Because if I just got on this show an hour every <laughs> week, people would get so tired. Of, I would run out of things to talk about. <laughs> and and it's not that it's delivering value to the audience and um, making sure that it's about you it's about you it's about people understanding your subject matter expertise and how can i help best position you in the light that we have in the audience that we have that we're building together so um i did put this in the show notes i just yes, asked I for your free obligation uh, obligation, no obligation, confidential beliefs survey by emailing marilyn at profitgps.com and so um, as we're wrapping, Marilyn, uh, people can find you at ProfitGPS.com. They can email you. Um, if you guys have any questions, please post them in the in the comments. One of us will get back to you. It's a wrap. Anything, uh -huh. any last minute notes that you'd like to add about sales, about LinkedIn, about social selling, about the future of LinkedIn, any any ideas like what the next thing's going to be other well, than LinkedIn? You know, LinkedIn is growing. So if you guys have received a welcome video from me, that, that's part of my strategy and my social selling strategy is I do video. You know, I talk about 675 million people on LinkedIn and then a week later, a month later, there's 728 million. I mean, this platform is growing like crazy, all walks of life, every country that's out there. Um, the decision makers you want to be in front of, they're on um, LinkedIn. If you're a B2B salesperson, if you're a B2B company, you need to be on LinkedIn. That's that's just my platform. And it, you, I couldn't say it any better, Catherine, but I will say one other thing to wrap up. Um, I started writing profiles because I was driving profile views for my clients. Mm -hmm. and if your profile isn't sticky isn't interesting, isn't attention grabbing, nothing you do on LinkedIn is going to work. And as Catherine said, this is the place you have to be. You wouldn't be in the marketplace with a lousy website. Why are you in the marketplace with a lousy LinkedIn profile? So you have, and that is my, that is where I start all my clients. They don't go anywhere without having what a sticky profile is. It means people want to stick around and get to know you. Yes. So yes, that's yes. my lecture on <laughs> LinkedIn, but I'm totally in agreement with you. That's why I specialize in LinkedIn. And uh, that is where you need to be. You have to have it. It's not a choice. Yes. 
Yes, it is. And uh, this isn't a resume placeholder. I'm not a resume writer either. I'm not a career coach. If you're interested yeah. in that, I'm not your girl. Yeah, me either. And also, um, if you're a speaker and you're writing your LinkedIn profile in the third person, that's not my jam either because I can't come in and write a bio for you. I am writing a client-facing LinkedIn profile that's going to answer the problem that you're solving and answer why is it that the client would want to work with you. So that that that's what we do. That's um, what you should be doing as well if you're out there and you're in the B2B space. I don't even I don't even work with B2C. Like that's not even No, right. I don't either. So that's where we overlap is I yeah. do the same thing. Client yes. facing profile, problem solution from yes. features and moving from features and benefits to problem solution. Um, and we both agree that that's where it's got to start. Yes. And with so, 728 million, I think if we split that in half, we'd still be yeah, happy. Yeah, we'd be okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, I have a feeling that this is just the beginning. Yes. Okay, you guys, that's going to be a wrap for our Wednesday session of the Art of Inspired Selling. Um, we've stepped up our emails. So if you're a subscriber to our email list, we are now doing the show promo. You're getting a little bit of a glimpse of the last week's show, what's happening this week. We're doing a little bit more. We're also sending out a social selling tip every uh, every week so that you can find out a little bit more about social selling. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Don't hesitate to reach out to me about Marilyn. If you're interested in being on the show, come on out. Let's see what we can do to get you in front of the audience of B2B entrepreneurs. So thank you so much, Marilyn. Have a thank wonderful you. holiday weekend. I oh, hope yes. you the best. Stay, on, stay online for just a second. I'll wrap up.